Up to you. Okay. Please. Okay. Uh, I can start. Okay. Good. Good afternoon, everyone. I mean, good afternoon and good evening. Uh, it's a very. It's a great pleasure uh, to to have you here uh, with us today um, for the fourth and final chapter of our Chinese science fiction webinar series. Um, the previous three events were moderated by, by Fabiana uh, from the Confucius Institute of Pisa. Uh, she's also with us today. And um, while well, today I have the pleasure uh, to, uh, to start this event, focus especially on the city of Chongqing. And, um, and of course, also the work of the renowned uh, Chongqing writer Han Song. Uh, Chongqing is, is a city I love, you know, a surprising and incredible city. And of course, also a cyberpunk city, and we will see later why. Um, my name is Marco, and uh, I am a PhD candidate at uh, Chongqing University. And in the past year, uh, I had also the great opportunity to cooperate with uh, Santana and uh, Galilei Institute um, in Chongqing, of course. Uh, at the moment, I am blocked in Milan because of the outbreak of the COVID-19 crisis. And, um, but uh, previously, I had the opportunity to live in Chongqing for two years. Um, a city that literally conquered my heart for its uniqueness and also uh, spiciness. I should say spiceness. Uh, I miss the city a lot and I want to go back there as soon as possible to finish my PhD research and um, to contribute for my small, I mean, from my, my small point of view, from my small experience to the positive building of Sino-Italian relations. Um, today, so today I will not be alone in this journey. And I'm very pleased to introduce you to, of course, Francesco, uh, Chiara Cigarini, and also um, Mr. Hansung. And the four of us are somehow related to the city of Chongqing for different reasons. Uh, for someone is uh, the hometown, uh, some others uh, chose it uh, for, for business and for academic reasons, uh, but we're all related to the beautiful city of Chongqing. And uh, um, of course, this seminar will be structured in, um, in, uh, as, as Francesco said before, in uh, three parts, in three slots. In the first one, I will give a brief introduction of the Galilei Institute and the city of Chongqing. And then Francesco will, will start talking about the, his experience in Chongqing. And then in the second one, Chiara Cigarini will introduce uh, her work and the work of Hansong. And in the last part, we're gonna interview Mr. Hansong. So Francesco, you, you can go on, please. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with uh, the activities, I mean, the, of the Galilei Institute in Chongqing. Uh, the Galileo Galilei Institute, Italian uh, Institute, uh, was established in December 20, uh, 2007 in the main campus of Chongqing University. And the Institute is the result of a cooperation agreement between Santana School of Advanced Studies and Chongqing University. Uh, and it was, um, uh, this, this cooperation was officially signed in December 2004 uh, during the visit in China uh, of the then Italian president Carlo Zilio Ciampi. And, and thank, thanks to the continued support of its Chinese partner, the GGII has increasingly expanded and diversified its activities. Uh, the main goal of the Institute is to strengthen and join research projects on areas of expertise uh, shared by Santana and CQU. Um, this includes innovation management and health and well-being management, augmented reality and biorobotics, photonics, software engineering, and telecommunication engineering. Um, in order to improve the acceleration of research projects, the Institute facilitates interaction opportunities between academics, researchers, and scholars of Santana and Chongqing University. Um, so, but what are the main activities of the Institute? Um, as you can see in the slide, uh, the GGII guarantees a physical presence in uh, Western China and of course networking activities. Since uh, 2007, the Institute uh, can count on physical office spaces offered by Chongqing University and uh, its team have attended the main events in Western China. And of course, it also gives strenuous support to Santana academic delegations and Italian universities in Chongqing, always looking for uh, synergies with Italian association and institutions in Chongqing, such for example, uh, the Italian consulate. And um, uh, please, uh, Francesco, go on, please. Yeah, the, the, the GGII has also a lot of publications on contemporary China and Chongqing, 
I like the bi-weekly socioeconomic insights called Galileo Weekly Observer, or also articles on Chongqing culture, history, and tourism must see places, and also interviews with key people of Sunny Italian relations and main actors of PISA Chongqing relations. And then, of course, the third main activity uh, in the next slide. Uh, is of course the uh, promotion of Italian language and culture uh, through language courses and uh, uh, CILS certification, the organization of cultural events, uh, the presence of the Italian movie club and film library, and also uh, the info point studying in Italy. And then the last, uh, the last part of the activities, um, the next slide is the, uh, the fact that GGII fosters people to people academic cooperation with support to education and research programs between Santana School and Chunchi University. Uh, and this is really, really important. And I think it has been pretty successful in the, in the past few years. Um, so when it comes especially to the uh, relations with uh, CQ, the Chunchi University in Chunqing, um, the GGI has been, has been, is, is able to keep in active and constant contact with the most innovative departments and laboratories of the Chinese University. And of course, is always up to date on the latest research out outcomes and research projects, the new pri priorities identified by the central government, as well as the projects where Santana can provide complementary expertise. And of course, um, uh, to date, the GGI is running several successful projects in partnership with the School of International Education of Chunchi University, the International Office, the School of Economics and Business Administration, and has launched many academic exchange dialogues between individual professors of the two universities. Um, the second part of my, um, my contribution to the seminar is, uh, is about Chongqing. You know, I call this part Chongqing the city of wonders. Um, Chongqing is a special municipality uh, in China. It's one of the four special municipalities in China. The others are uh, Beijing, Shanghai, and Tianjin. Uh, but it, uh, it's, it's the only one in Western China, so it's pretty pretty important in in Western China. Um, Chongqing was separated from Sichuan in 1997, and uh, its territory includes industrial center, um, a fascinating set of mountains, historical monuments, and of course a 400 kilometer stretch of the Yangtze River. Uh, basically, Chongqing represents the gateway to Western China, um, and also a a uh, continuously expanding port about 2,400 kilometers from Shanghai. Um, of course, it's a unique city uh, because it combines different physical, cultural, infrastructural, and linguistic components. Uh, and also, uh, it's unique also from a linguistic point of view. Uh, its inhabitants speak the dialect also called Chongqinghua, and uh, the city is not yet maybe it's not yet internationalized like the first star one city uh, in China. Uh, but is advancing rapidly toward a global dimension. Uh, if, we, if we talk about the history of Chongqing, we can see how Chongqing has a very uh, interesting and millennial history. So the city may have been the capital of the kingdom of Ba uh, around like 1000 uh, before Christ. Although the first traces of the city date back to the conquest of Ba that took place 700 years later. Um, by the eminent Qing dynasty, which will later dominate all China. So the current name is um, Chongqing, is made of two characters uh, in Chinese language, and it means double celebration. And it was a name given by Zhao Duan, who was born there in uh, 1190, and uh, when he became Song Emperor. Um, and uh, it's important, it's a strategic place for Chinese, in Chinese history. Um, there was a lot of battles in Chongqing and uh, um, for example, with the last Song Dynasty, Chinese armies kept the Mongol invaders at bay for 36 years in nearby Huchuan, uh, before Chongqing, now enclosed by massive stone walls, was sacked. Um, and also in December 1937, the city resumed its role as a defensive outpost when the Nationalist Communist Alliance, driven out of Eastern China by the Japanese invasion, installed a temporary capital in wartime. Um, and also there was another important figure like General Stilwell. Uh, it was the, the head of the US military. Um, he, he has its own base in the city until the defeat suffered by Chiang Kai-shek by the communists in 1944. Um, and of course, Chongqing is many things together. 
um, Chongqing, sorry, Chongqing is many things together. Um, it's surrounded by mountains, so you can call it the city of mountains, uh, but it's also crossed by two rivers, uh, large rivers, uh, which are the Jialing River and the Yanzhe, or in Chinese is Changjiang River. And uh, for this reason, it's also, it's also called the city of rivers. Um, but at the same time, um, it's also called the capital of fog. I mean, the fog capital in Chinese is like Wudu, um, because the fog arises in the evenings, especially during the cold months, and make the, the whole environment uh, fascinating and special. But it's also a city of lights, especially at night, because of its skyscrapers and amazing, uh, amazing structures. Uh, it's called also the 3D city uh, because its uh, infrastructures are developed uh, through uh, three dimensions. As you can see in this picture, I mean, this is an incredible uh, structure uh, in, in Chongqing. And of, of course, finally, Chongqing, it's a city, um, I mean, it's also called uh, the cyberpunk Chongqing. Uh, as you can see here uh, at night, there's a lot of lights and uh, skyscrapers, um, innovative and uh, modern constructions. Um, and uh, of course, Chongqing is a city in constant change. Uh, it combines modernity and traditions. There are new skyscrapers with also a uh, particular old and Chinese unique architectural style. Um, so for this reason, uh, in Chongqing, uh, natural modernity, natural features, and even retro charm come together to offer suggestive images. Uh, its streets, its landscapes, especially at night, make it perfect place for uh, to set futuristic stories in science fiction novels. Um, and I'm sure that um, the other guests uh, today are gonna are gonna are gonna talk about this aspect of the city. Uh, so for this okay. reason, after this very brief introduction, I can give back the, the floor to uh, Francesco. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Marco, very much. It was uh, very interesting. I didn't know much about Chongqing. I was there a couple of times, so it's good to know more, especially for the people that uh, are not uh, from China. So we have a, a public forum from Italy and from other countries as well. I will... Uh, now go deeper into the uh, futuristic aspects of uh, uh, Chongqing because uh, let's say that uh, my experience has led me to um, let's say touch on the science fiction side of uh, uh, Chongqing. Um, I, my experience with China started like three or four years ago and uh, thanks to meeting uh, most of the important science fiction writers and scholars and influencers uh, of Chinese science fiction, um, I'm now developing some interesting uh, uh, projects uh, related to uh, science fiction and uh, based mostly in uh, Chongqing. So I will take you briefly to this presentation which I gave uh, some months ago during the opening ceremony of the uh, fishing castle in Chongqing uh, together with my friend Zhang Fan, um, that he is the, the soul and is really the engine <laughs> of all these activities. And, uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, you're welcome, you know it. And uh, so the thing is that he, uh, uh, he proposed some really exceptional thing to me and I couldn't really say no it's like an amazing project that at the moment it is possible to do it just in china from what i can uh, understand and what i know but one of the reason why i was so enthusiastic in joining him is because we know from the from the west that there is just one science fiction and uh, that the history of western science fiction is just depicted here in this uh, infographic made by war shelley and uh, as soon as I started to visit China more and more, I realized that this picture was a kind of exportation of our imagination onto the world. And when I say our, I mean not mine, but the English or the American uh, science fiction, because most of it comes from, from their countries and their um, culture. So slowly, 
I realized that there was another science fiction. And Chinese science fiction is exactly one of the most important uh, um, science fiction at the moment. Uh, and uh, the Friends of Future Affairs Administration have proved graphically that science fiction in China has a long history, at least just like all the other science fictions, uh, in terms of, of course, mainly proper science fiction, then of course, China has a much, much older legacy of fantastic and uh, supernatural and, you know, all the folklore and, uh, and the uh, mystic uh, uh, stories and, and, uh, and uh, uh, mythologies. Like. So um, I will not go into that, but this is the reason why. Because I think that we deserve a kind of bipolarity or multipolarity at the moment. And we need to bring new voices uh, to the uh, global uh, discussion about science fiction. So I joined this amazing group of people. We gather for the first time for the opening ceremony in December. Uh, this is just to show you uh, the enthusiasm and passion that the people are throwing into this kind of project. I will give you more details about what it is, but this looks like a very promising project for the development of science fiction in China. And of course, this is based in Hechuan, which is uh, some 60 kilometers at north of uh, Chongqing. Um, I was invited by Jan Fan and I received my red booklet. I'm very proud and it's in my living room now. <laughs> but the center, of course, <laughs> features important uh, uh, persons in Chinese science fiction, uh, Professor Wu Yan and uh, uh, Professor Yan Feng. So um, the, uh, the fact that uh, uh, Jan Fan could gather all this kind of high level support, it means that there is a lot of interest at the moment about uh, science fiction in China. Um, what is the Fishing Castle going to do? Um, I've just highlighted some things, but uh, the things that I know about, uh, Jiang Fan probably has some other secret weapons <laughs> to deliver in, in the next in the next month yeah. but uh, we will see if he wants to to join yeah. or if he wants to say something just feel free okay i will just do it yeah, sure, uh, sure. according yeah. to my knowledge so according to my knowledge uh, we're going to have a, a future fiction workshop where i will lead the um, main uh, um, wait there's some people that, uh, uh, yeah. Mute a bit. Uh, we think it's a Chinese TV radio. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Just is there somebody? Okay. No, oh, I don't want to. I don't know. Somebody. Yeah. Oh, wait. I can't find the person. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Sorry. Um, so, we're going to have a future fiction workshop, we're going to have a, a Fishing Castle Science Fiction Award, we're going to have a translation center, we're going to have a, a multimedia projects uh, involving theater and video games, and probably also um, a residency for science fiction um, writers. Um, the, the center at the moment I visited it in, in December, and uh, it, it's, it's building up. There are some parts which are already open, some parts they are still building, and Jan Fan sent me some, some ideas how it could be, how it looks like. So, of course, I consider this a top class, I mean, like really the highest level you can get uh, in terms of facilities and, uh, and structures. I don't think there is anything like that in the world not even the Clarion uh, workshop at the moment, I think. Um, so it's really a place to explore the future. I don't know how, how many things and what kind of things there will be uh, specifically, but uh, I'm pretty confident that it will be amazing. I've seen some of the pictures and uh, it looks like um, uh, a really um, futuristic uh, uh, place to gather uh, the best uh, writers and the best students from coming from many of the uh, Chinese universities. So at the moment, I think we're working on, on two, two levels. One is the um, 
the, the best students, the best young, talented writer that could emerge from the uh, Chinese uh, science fiction field. And the other is more established um, authors, uh, which will come as editors, uh, our teachers, as translators. And uh, so there will be a two tier level. Uh, the people that will be there to learn and the people that will be there to teach, okay? But uh, there will be also a huge uh, award, which is probably the biggest I have ever heard about in the East, in the West, <laughs> in the whole galaxy, probably. Uh, so uh, this, I, I, will not, I will not spoil the, the, yeah. the numbers, but uh, believe me, it's going to be something that... Uh, uh, would make uh, a writer probably retire <laughs> after he wins this award. So that means that there's a lot of money involved um, and a lot of visibility, of course. So uh, in China, you know, numbers are quite big. Um, but to, to get there, you will have to provide, you know, very excellent uh, science fiction stories. So there will be a jury, there will be, uh, you know, people that will read the story. So it will really be given to the most talented writer uh, of the year, okay? Uh, going a, a bit into the workshop, we, we're gonna have, as I said, people, uh, established writers and talented writers. Uh, so this is like an integrated approach because we want to give uh, these stories um, uh, a, a, a wider market. That means that we will translate the stories in English um, I will be involved with, probably with the Italian translation. We will have special guest editors. We will have uh, publishers. We will call uh, relevant science fiction writers like uh, Kim Stanley Robinson, James Patrick Kelly, Ken Liu, Cory Doctor, Ken McLeod, Lavi Tidar. They have invited them, most of them, in China last year, and they already said they would love to come back to teach for some weeks. So... Um, I have also developed a kind of matrix to have uh, the people study in the morning or in the afternoon. Then we will work out all the details to understand what kind of um, involvement uh, and uh, the, the, the kind of activities. It will be a writing course. It will be like uh, people will take uh, lessons from the masters of science fiction uh, and then they will use the 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 other time to to sit down and and write uh, basically they have to come up with a, with a short story um, I think this is the main idea um, then I've provided with the matrix of the old uh, course so one two three weeks and how we will do it day by day hour by hour uh, so it's gonna be really a high level course uh, up to the standards of, as I said, the Clarion uh, workshop, which at the moment is the most relevant and most famous uh, science fiction course in the world. The thing is probably this, that uh, uh, Jamfan works with a, a public institution. So this is totally non-profit. It means that uh, the people will not uh, uh, have to pay to attend to this uh, workshop so they will be chosen just on the merit and that means that there will be no fee to get to the um to the course uh that's different yes, yes, from yeah. the that's very different from the clarion workshop where you pay some thousands of uh, dollars of course there are so there are some discounts or uh, stuff like that but basically uh, this this course is gonna be totally uh, free um, what we're going to talk about, this is, that's why it's, it's relevant to China and it's relevant to Chongqing because uh, we are going to uh, teach, we're going to show uh, the most important uh, element of contemporary science fiction, elements that deal with artificial intelligence. Of course, China at the moment is the number one country developing projects uh, related to artificial intelligence and big data. We're going to explore the applications of 3D printing, augmented reality, the applications in the, term, in the fields of biotechnology and nanotechnology, um, analyze the effect of blockchain, climate change, uh, 
how the new media and social network will affect um, communities and countries and probably even the whole world. And uh, so it all connected to this new kind of science fiction that is rapidly emerging from the issues of, let's say, solar punk. Uh, in a way, it is related to the time we are living of uh, uh, sustainability, of renewable resources, of a new way to address the issues of capitalism, okay? Um, so let's say, okay, this is not important. Uh, we go and have a, a, like an integrated storytelling lab. Um, I will bring in my expertise with future fiction and uh, I really will kind of link all these things together. The thing we could develop is uh, um, really a science fiction laboratory. Um, I'm, I'm sure that John Fun is, is doing a lot of uh, things in the background and is trying to um, hire also screenwriters, is trying to hire also translators, and uh, he's going everywhere in China to create a kind of uh, a meeting of excellence in terms of putting the best young talent to this uh, project. And uh, I think it's going to be really exciting to work with all these people to, to create different kind of uh, storytelling that can adapt to different media, like audiobooks, like comics, uh, illustration, installation, design fiction, architecture, everything. It, it's it's the, from the science fiction seed, from the science fiction idea, really we can spread many um, different kind of devices, many different kind of... Uh, appliances, many different kind of uh, tools, many different kind of creativities. So this is the main reason and I really feel excited about it because uh, it's a unique um, uh, opportunity at the moment. Um, I think uh, that's basically uh, what I wanted to tell you. I will keep some minutes for having uh, like some questions, but uh, uh, this is just one of the, my preferred jokes. Uh, people from the caves, when are you going to stop wasting your time with that science fiction nonsense and start dealing with reality? Yeah, right. We are creating something. We are creating something really interesting. So I hope you will join us for the, of course, the next presentation. We will go into Han Song uh, stories, into Han Song uh, uh, literature, and uh, with Chiara. Uh, but uh, for the moment, uh, I. I say thank you very much, Xie and uh, we. I open the 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 mic for everybody. Just give me a second, and uh, I, I unmute the people. So please don't make too much noise. But if you want to ask a question, just unmute yourself, and um, um, we can have a little discussion for the next ten minutes. Uh, oh, Rob, there is a question. Is it open to the general public? Um, well, uh, it is. It is a university, uh, so maybe uh, John Fun, you might know something more. Is it open to the general public? Yeah, the center will be open, but it's a. Uh, it's yes. A yeah. Sure. Definitely. Yes. It, uh, especially for the you know from the the children to young adults. That's uh, we want to attract this younger. Uh, future strengths to to build the power of the Chinese uh, sci-fi future. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It's totally yeah, open public. Uh -huh. I wasn't sure if it was a... Um, okay, I, of course, now I see yeah, it's part of the university. Um, will it only be open during university times then? Or will it, for example, be open during the summer to the general public or only really when the university is open? Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, uh, the university, uh, uh, in our university sy uh, systems, we have three universities in Chongqing, in Shandong, mm -hmm. and in Shanxi province, uh, different uh, three universities. All these universities uh, need to be uh, open for all the, you know, for the, 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 uh, the people around the universities so they can come here anytime but not 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 now you know for no. the yeah uh -huh. for the coronavirus so yeah, yeah sure it's maybe more speaking for the people okay uh -huh. 
Thank you. All right. Hi, Shanky. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi, Shanky. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Shanti. Hello. Yeah, we are fighting, you know, all <laughs> the nations. Yeah. No, the thing is that... oh, don't fight. Come on. <laughs> not here. Shanti is in India, but not very, here. Very difficult. Yeah, now that everybody is like uh, fighting, and uh, now there are so many, you know, self proclaimed, you know, sinologists yeah. and other things. But the, sometimes the problem, it looks very difficult, but actually it's very easy. But, anyways, <laughs> nothing going to happen because both are the trade partner trade talks money talks and sooner or later will be these yeah. things are you know i think uh, it could be what we say i believe in the that is a how to say is a herping kung fu mutual yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, coexistence <laughs> the, the peaceful yeah. mutual coexistence yeah. i agree but I people agree. Are, yeah. people are not very uh, i mean to say it was quite shocking for both countries mm. But people are nowadays they are more aware as compared to the past. They said, of course, the mistakes okay will happen in future. It's okay. Let's resolve it. So let's find out. Everybody knows the problem. What about the solution? Yeah. Solution All is right. the most important. Okay. So I'm extremely yeah, sure. sorry yeah. because I missed the part of the of your discussion. So maybe you can continue and later on I will join you. Which yeah, yeah, don't sure worry. We we yeah, have yeah, sure, we sure. have now we have now four or five minutes. Then we have a break of twenty minutes, and then we will okay. gather again at uh, uh, three o'clock my time, which is whatever at your place, the place where you are. I don't know, but in twenty no, minutes I will open another okay. another session. Okay, um, yeah. we have just just two three minutes, so. I don't know if Jamfan, you want to add something? Was I clear? Uh, did I forgot yeah, something? You are clear. Yeah. Yeah. You you make a wonderful presentation. Yeah. But you. just like you said, uh, for some programs, uh, uh, we are still not declared at this time. Uh, we need time to prepare and uh, yeah. so yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were yeah. supposed to start you did this good, summer. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> we were, <laughs> yeah. We were yeah, supposed. I, I hope the, yeah. Yeah, I hope this year uh, fly, uh, fly quickly. You know, so next year <laughs> everything just a change. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Too I, bad. But I think that it, this year is quite complicated <laughs> because even the Howard, Howard said yeah. that they are not very sure about it that whether they will start oh, the semester God. or not. Uh, so I think that situation in I think in the, all over the world is more or less is quite safe, and hmm. because. So it's not about the, it's, of course, the virus and the COVID-19 is it's, uh, spreading all over the world. But at the same time, it also depends, like, like I'm from India, and now the cases like has been increased a very, you know, in a very fast manner. So maybe possible, like in China, if there is no case or America, maybe the cases are low, but maybe they will not invite those people who like, who have, you know, the number of cases as compared to more cases as compared to their yeah, own yeah. host countries. Yeah. So that is the first problem. Second thing is like in America, I think they are more, uh, it's much more complicated because most of the visas they already canceled and for other visa, they haven't updated any information. No, like just be and other thing. You have to be so ready that, to do a lot of online courses <laughs> like we're doing now. <laughs> oh my God. Then what, what, is, what is the purpose of the Howard? You know that I quit my job and other things and then they said, okay, we will go for the online uh, classes. Because what I have seen, you know, there are lots of, uh, you know, disparity in terms of online cases and other things because of the, you know, library, material and so on. So it's quite difficult for us. And even the, because of the elections as well. In America, so I don't yeah. think that this year, I don't think they are not gonna invite to anyone. It's not about China, or it's not about India, but I don't think that uh, they are not gonna invite or issue any visas. No, no, so that's a very. We'll wait for next year. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Other fast? Uh, any fast um, question? I have a quick one, and I'm sorry if it seems that I'm uninformed because. Uh, today, of course, is the first time I've heard about the uh, the uh, center. Um, are the writing courses uh, mainly or solely aimed at uh, young Chinese writers, or will you also be having uh, workshops for international writers? Uh, at the moment, it's going to be like that. 
uh, for 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 Chinese uh, students. Yeah. Yes, at the moment, okay. things like that. Okay. Okay, I think we have some seconds. I will just uh, close it because I don't like when they shut us down. So I will close <laughs> it here and I uh, will see you in 20 minutes. Okay, really a pleasure to meet you. Really, really happy to okay. see you. From all see, you from all. see you soon. See you soon. See you soon. Bye-bye. Take bye -bye. care. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. See you soon. Bye-bye.